Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I want to go through the basics of the anatomy for the digestive system. So I'm not going to do any physiology in this, in this video. Um, first, to get to the digestive organs in this model, we need to take out the lungs and the heart. Um, and the way I'll go through this is we'll start in the mouth and go all the way throughout the anus. Food starts in the mouth. Um, accessory organs that we have while we're masticating or chewing our food. And I'm not sure if the tongue is considered an accessory organ, but it's certainly an organ of digestion. The tongue is in here. This is a sublingual salivary gland. This is submandibular. This would be the right submandibular salivary gland and the right parotid salivary gland with its duct. We chew our food and then we swallow it. It goes to the back of the throat. And I'm going to move to a different model to show you where it goes after that. This model of the face does a better job. It has better, a better esophagus, basically. So there's the tongue again. Um, there's submandibular salivary gland. And I think on the other side of the head, it has left submandibular salivary gland, left parotid salivary gland. And I don't see any sublingual. OK. Oh, no, there they are. Up here, that's sublingual salivary gland. At any rate, we've done those already, so let's keep crunching along. You chew up your food, um, you swallow your food, and when you swallow your food, your soft palate covers your sinus cavity, so you don't swallow food up into your sinuses. Your epiglottis covers over your windpipe, your trachea, so that you don't swallow food into your windpipe and down into your lungs. And that shunts the food into this. This is the esophagus. And it looks like a tiny tube here, but that's just because it's, when, it's not, when there's not food actively in it, it's closed. And when the food comes in, it's able to stretch and open. So there's the esophagus. The food travels down the esophagus via a process called peristalsis. On this model, this is the esophagus, kind of yellowish tan. Um, and after it's passed, as, it, as it passes through the esophagus through peristalsis, it goes down and through a sphincter here, which is called the cardiac sphincter. The cardiac sphincter is at the top of the stomach. Cardiac sphincter opens up into the stomach. Um, another thing to notice here is that the esophagus passes through this, the diaphragm, and into the abdominal cavity and to the stomach. So let's look at the anatomy of the stomach. One of the first things to notice is this one's been uh, kind of dissected to show you the layers of muscle that the stomach has. It's all smooth muscle and the muscle runs in different directions. That's to enable the stomach to churn in different directions to help mix up the food that's inside of the stomach. Cardiac sphincter is up here. This doesn't have a cross section of the cardiac sphincter. Um, if I open it up, we can see these folds of the mucosa on the inside of the stomach, and those folds are called rugae. This top of the stomach is called the fundus of the stomach, so this would be the fundic region. The part near the cardiac sphincter, obviously, is called the cardiac region. The larger part is called the body of the stomach. And then the last part here, which is kind of funnel-shaped, is called the pyloric region. It leads to this sphincter in kind of, I don't know, purplish-gray. That sphincter is called the pyloric sphincter. Other features on the stomach, lesser curvature, greater curvature, and I think for the stomach that's about it. So I can put the stomach back together. From the stomach we go into the small intestine. If I put this stomach back in here, you can see that that pyloric region leads directly into the small intestine. This pink part here is part of the small intestine. The beginning part of the small intestine is called the duodenum, and before I remove this to show you the rest of the duodenum, this down here is the rest of the small intestine. The small intestine is framed within the abdomen by the large intestine. So let me take this out and we'll talk more about the small intestine. Uh-oh, I knocked out the reproductive organs. Um, this is the duodenum of the small intestine. It's the beginning part. It's a C-shaped piece of the small intestine. It's suspended by a little ligamentous tissue here. Um, other things that you can see on the torso model there's folds in the small intestine, and those are called circular folds, or plicea circulares, or plicae circularis, depending on how your instructor pronounces it. 
There's also an opening in here coming from this organ, the pancreas. Along with the pancreas as an accessory organ in the digestive system, the liver is also an accessory organ in the digestive system for a couple of reasons that we'll get into when we do the physiology. Um, and this sphincter here, or this opening into the small intestine, it's called the hepatopancreatic ampulla, um, also known to some as the sphincter of Odi. That's actually the name of the sphincter that's inside of it, but you can call it sphincter of Odi as well. Um, that opening brings in secretions from the small or from the um, pancreas, and also from this organ that sits on the bottom of the liver, called the gallbladder. The liver's job as an accessory organ for digestion is to produce bile. The liver makes the bile, the gallbladder stores the bile, and delivers the bile to the small intestine when it's needed. Um, anatomy of the liver. This is the bottom side of the liver. First of all, if we look at the front of the liver, the thick part is the right side, so this is the right side of the liver. The green thing underneath it is the gallbladder, so this is the gallbladder. In my model, it's been opened up to show you the inside of the gallbladder. The gallbladder leads to what's called the cystic duct. And how it works is this. The liver makes bile. It delivers that bile via the right and left hepatic duct. The bile goes through the common hepatic duct and through a series of sphincters it can be shunted here into the gallbladder for storage and concentration to increase its concentration. When stimulated the gallbladder will contract and those sphincters will redirect the bile and cause it to go down this which is the common bile duct and that common bile duct then leads into that opening in the small intestine that I talked about a while ago. So that's the major anatomy for the liver that I want my students to know. And again, remember, it's another accessory organ, just like the pancreas. The pancreas is part of the endocrine system, but it's part of the digestive system as well. It's an accessory organ of the digestive system. It makes digestive juices. More about that later when we get to physiology. So this is duodenum again. Now let's move on to the rest of the small intestine. If I remove the small intestine from its package with the large intestine, the beginning part of the small intestine is here on the torso model and it's called the duodenum. Continuing after the duodenum, we have the jejunum. And that's kind of the middle part of the small intestine. And the end part, the last part of the small intestine is called the ileum. And on this model you can see that that's where the small intestine ends and leads into the large intestine. That's the part that I always point to when I want the students to say ileum. So the three parts of the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. While we're here, this is representing mesentery. This back side here is representing mesentery. Mesentery connects the small intestine and the large intestine to the back of the abdominal wall and it contains blood vessels and lymphatics. From small intestine we move to large intestine. So this is my model's large intestine. There's the opening coming in from the ileum this is the ileocecal valve which allows the chyme to leave the small intestine and enter the large intestine. At the bottom of the large intestine we have the cecum. The cecum is the part of the large intestine that is below the ileocecal valve. Hanging off of the large intestine we have the appendix. Coming up from the cecum we have the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and then if I turn this around you can see this S-shaped region here called the sigmoid colon. The sigmoid colon then leads into the rectum and the rectum leads to the anal canal which leads to the anus. This model doesn't have an anus for, for me to show you but those are all of the, oh sorry, anatomy on the large intestine, I forgot. These little bulges coming off of the large intestine, those are called ostra. Those are the ostra. Ostra. Um, this is tinea coli. The smooth muscle in the large intestine has basically three ribbons and there are these little ribbons along the edges rather than wrapping all the way around the large intestine. Um, other things I could point to on this model I suppose we have mesentery again here. There's lymphatics, nervous tissue, and blood vessels. Um, the blood vessels coming from 
the intestines are part of what's called the hepatic portal system. So for my students, I just tell them if I'm pointing the blood vessels on the intestines, you should think hepatic portal system because it's important to know. I think that might be everything that we need for the just the anatomy of the uh, digestive system. Look for another video coming soon where I'll go through all of this anatomy again um, and I'll do physiology at the same time so you'll know what each organ's job is basically. Thank you once again for watching and as always if there's any questions, comments, please let me know.